Well, hello there. Welcome. <laughs> I can never not be weird, okay? It's just who I am. Just let me be me. Hot. So, I hear that you are interested in the new Maroon 5 album called Jordy. I think this is their seventh album. I'm gonna be honest, I'm, I've never been like a die-hard Maroon 5 fan, but I've always enjoyed the music that they made. And I think that Adam Levine is super talented and I know that they are uh, amazing songwriters. So I am looking forward to listening to this album. For those of you guys that are new here, welcome. Mwah, I love you. Uh, my name is Dano. I'm a singer songwriter from Asbury Park, New Jersey. And the whole reason that I started doing these listen with me's and these reaction videos is because the best way that I learn how to be a better songwriter is by doing exactly that, like listening to the artists and kind of picking apart some of the things that I like. So I thought that this would be a good album because as I said, even though I'm not a dad, hard fan. I know that there's going to be some song writing gems in here and so I am looking forward to learning from Adam Levine. So we have 11 songs in this album plus two more on the deluxe. We're not going to do the deluxe in this video but if you guys want me to react to the other two songs, leave it in the comments, let me know, or come say what's up on Instagram and be my BFF, okay? And also as a side note, Maroon 5 had, I forget which songs they were, but Maroon 5 had a song in the top 10 for three decades in a row. That is insane. That's like 30 years of musicianship and making music and still charting, like, that's insane. So I'm excited to at least like, you know, pick up some nuggets of wisdom from Adam Levine. Like, please teach me everything you know. That would be really dope. Also, one more thing I do have to say, I think it was a really good call. There's a lot of collabs on this album. And I thought that was a really good call by Maroon 5 and the team because, you know, I don't want to say it, but like Maroon 5 has been around the phrase that means that he's been around for a long time. <laughs> He's been around for a long time, but I think that doing collabs with people that are really kicking ass right now, like Megan Thee Stallion and her is just a really great way to help uh, this album be relevant and have some songs that are with some fresh artists. Even though Room 5 Adam Levine, we still love you, okay? Cheers to you. <laughs> but anyway, let's dive right in. The first song is Beautiful Mistakes and it features Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, I almost forgot to get my notebook. This beat is dope. Oh, the production is just so phenomenal. Nice harmonies. biggest takeaway is the song was so freaking catchy and it was so simple that it was easy for you to learn. So like if you've never heard the song before, you could literally be singing along by the end of it. And I think that that really is a skill. I know that like a lot of musicians will like crap on pop music for being simple, but there's a reason why it's pop and popular because it's easy to digest. And a lot of the people that listen to pop music are not like virtuoso musicians and they need something that's simple enough for them to like be able to participate and sing along. And I think that Maroon 5 does an exceptional job at that and something that I always need to keep in mind because I write pop music and I always have a hard time simplifying it. Um, so it really is a skill. But here are some of the ways that I think that they were able to nail that simplicity. First, we had um, a lot of repetition, both in the lyrics and in the melody, which is great because if you're repeating the lyrics and the melody, it's easy enough for you to remember by the end of the song. Duh, like makes perfect sense. But also the melodies were very simple. And even in the lyrics, we have a na na na, na na na. So you don't even need to know the words. You can na, everyone can na. So anytime you do like a na or a la or a ooh or a yeah part, 
<laughs> um, where there's not actual words. That is something that's really simple and a great way to get your audience singing with you when you're at the show, because isn't that like the greatest feeling of all time? I, I also did want to mention, just because I've been hearing this a lot, especially in pop music, and I think that it's something that I need to do more in my own music writing. But in order to keep the song interesting, um, a great way that Maroon 5 had some variation was they just kind of pulled all the instruments back just for like a, a beat or two sometimes. And you had like the melody going, especially the parts where there were some harmonies on that melody. And that was really great because it kept the song interesting, but like in your repetitive melody and your repetitive lyrics, it kept it um, different enough so that uh, it didn't become boring by the end of the song. So I thought that that was really cool and a great way to grab your listener's attention. Also, Megan Thee Stallion, we freaking love her, okay? Isn't she such a boss? Like, I'm just obsessed with her and I feel like her career is just like, just at the beginning, it's gonna do amazing things. And I'm just so excited to watch her continue to grow because she is killing it and I freaking love her. <laughs> but anyway, her uh, verse in the song provided a lot of contrast. Um, it was very different from everything else that we've heard. So anytime you have contrast, it's again, really, really great to have in your song to keep it exciting for your listener. The last thing I wanna comment is I really loved uh, the outro or like the post chorus at the end uh, for the lyrics because they were kind of a mix between that nah and a play on the chorus lyrics, but simpler. And it's like so simple, it's stupid, okay? But it works like a charm. So the chorus line is, I make inside my head, she's naked in my bed. Very deep and meaningful, I know. Um, but anyway, the post chorus is, na na na, in my head, na na na, in my bed. Um, so it's so simple, it's so simple. I don't know why when I write, I have such a hard time bringing it back. Like you just want people to be singing along with you. That's it. Have it simple. Have it be fun. I just need to remind myself to just like not take it so damn seriously all the time. But anyway, that was great. Up next, we have Lost. Ooh. Oh, that was really cool. Another stellar song from Maroon 5. Again, the beat was so dope. Like, you know, I feel like sometimes with pop music, it's like so much less about the lyrics and like the meaning of the song. Like that almost doesn't matter at all. It's just about the beat. Like, is it sick? Can you dance along to it? Um, you know, not every piece of music has to be this like deep, meaningful piece that you need to digest. Like sometimes the purpose of music can just be to like dance along to in your car when you're driving or like, I don't know, lighthearted, like have it on while you're like at the beach chilling. So I, I think that I just have to keep that in mind personally when I write my own pop music, it's like, you know, don't get me wrong. I love the songs that are like super deep and meaningful, but also at the same time, like just chill out and have fun with it and just like make something that sounds good. That is all that matters. Does it sound good? If the answer is yes, then dope. That's it. But anyway, I thought that the uh, drum part in the beginning was very attention grabbing. It was unique. You kind of had like this muted sound um, and also these unique drum sounds. So I thought that the combination of that uh, made it really interesting. And because you only had that, it provided a lot of opportunities to build up. So like every few bars, you were adding another element to it to keep it going up. And then I was caught so off guard because they did this build up and you thought that they were gonna open up into this chorus, but no. But no, they had to catch me off guard, okay? And they pulled you back and didn't give you that like thing that you wanted at the end there. And so I thought that that was so great. Anytime that you catch your listener off guard or catch them by surprise, it's a point of interest and a point where they kind of wake up and go like, oh my God, um, like I did in that song. But anyway, by doing a few of these, I've actually noticed that I kind of hear that a lot in pop music, like the pullback chorus where you think it's gonna open up into the chorus and the chorus actually pulls back. So I think that is a really, really cool effect. Definitely something that I am gonna try in my own music. But anyway, that's enough about this one. Up next, we have Echo featuring Black Bear. I 
plastic hole inside of me I try to fill with anything Like taking trips and buying things But bridges that was got in me And all that I feel is the price All that I taste is regret I cannot tell what is right I got to say no, no, no. Uh, cool ending. Caught me off guard. I wanted it to keep going, which I guess is a good thing. All right. Um, I actually really like that one. I thought it was super catchy and probably will be adding that one to my summer playlist. Um, all right. What do we got? Um, so the first thing, Adam Levine has such a kick-ass falsetto, and I love that that was really showcased in this song. Um, it makes him unique as a vocalist, and so, like, fuck yeah. Get it. Sing up! Um, <laughs> oh God, my neighbors can probably hear everything and they probably hate me. Um, okay, also like we know we had to do an echo on the echo, right? Like if this song was called Echo and they had a lyric called Echo and they didn't echo it, I would be like, that's it, I'm quitting, I leave. So they had to do that and I thought that it was executed really well. Um, it was a fun echo to like sing along to. Also, again, we have lots of repetition in this song. Maroon 5 actually just repeated the chorus twice uh, in the chorus, um, but the way that they kept it interesting is that they actually added some more elements in the instrumentals underneath. Um, so it kind of did sound like a new section um, and it kind of hit harder. The second section of the chorus hit harder. So um, that's a great way to keep your repetition interesting. Okay, so uh, in the second verse, uh, Adam actually put the accent on every syllable, which is a cool thing to do uh, in and of itself. But um, the number of syllables, when you have an uneven number of syllables between the first line and the second line, like they don't match up, it creates this instability, especially when the first line is longer and the second line is shorter. And the reason why is because you are expecting the second line to match the first line. So it's like you have all these syllables in the first line, then in the second line, when it cuts short, you're like, wait, there's more. And that is a, a great way to captivate your uh, listener um, and have them feel like something's missing. So I thought that that was used really well. And so like, for example, it's you flip the beat round inside of my chest, changing the frequency. You had me tripping the night that you left, lost in electricity. So anyway, you're like waiting for that part there that's missing. So um, a really cool thing to do with the lyrics. Also, speaking of lyrics and lyric rhythm and all that fun shit, um, in Black Bear's verse, I really, really liked how uh, he changed the rhythm of the lyrics right at the last section. Um, and so he kind of upped the pace in the last, in the last like four lines. And I hate the way I watch you leave my ego got the best of me. I gave you insecurities. It's just one of my belly sheets. And now that I feel it's the price, I'll, like hear how it goes faster there. I think it's super dope just because it like keeps it really exciting. Um, it kind of like ups the speed of it. So it, the movement feels like it's going a little bit faster. Um, and yeah, thought it was cool. Anyway, that's all I have for this one. Up next, we have Lovesick. Five saw me dancing to this, he would probably like find a way to fire me from YouTube. Um, okay, uh, cool. Uh, you know, it was a good song. It probably, for me, um, isn't gonna be the most memorable one on the album, but it was objectively very good and very well done. I do like that the song started with the chorus. For some reason, when I write my own music, I don't know like if it's just wired in my brain that like the structure is verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus. <laughs> but that's like, that structure is just not, is just not like popular anymore. So a lot of songs now are starting with the chorus and they're even, a lot of songs are doing like a post-chorus after the chorus or like an instrumental drop after the chorus. Um, so song structure is not that verse, pre-chorus, chorus form anymore. I mean, sometimes it is, but that's not like the by-end all be all whatever that phrase is, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so anyway, I just have to keep that in mind when I'm writing my own songs that sometimes you just need to start on the chorus. Actually, this song had the kind of post-chorus that I was just talking about where like, 
it's really instrumental. So there wasn't a lot of um, vocals and lyrics in the post-chorus. It was like, well, let me look it up so I can see. It's like, you got me lovesick. Instrumental, instrumental, instrumental. But I love it. Instrumental, instrumental, instrumental. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, just something for me personally to keep in mind when I'm writing my own music. Like, have fun with the structure and definitely, like, play around with the post-chorus because, I don't know, everyone loves to fucking dance and you just need a sick beat to do that. So... Anyway, let's move right along. Guys, I'm so excited for this song because it's Remedy and it features Stevie Nicks. Ah! Ah! <laughs> um, by the way, shameless plug, I actually did a cover of Landslide um, like a year ago. So if you want to check it out, there it is. Okay, anyway, here's Remedy. great that was great um i will say just off the bat i kind of wish that stevie nicks sang a little more in that song but it's fine anyway i don't know just like adam levine's voice and stevie nicks voice are so different but some for some reason they like just sound so awesome together like they just have a really nice mix together so i love that stevie nicks was doing some harmonies on that part thought it was super dope um again we have a ton of repetition a ton of repetition. I feel like Maroon 5 just mastered that like catchy pop sound. Um, they've been doing it for decades, so they obviously know what they're doing. Uh, but anyway, lots and lots of repetition. Um, but also at the same time, the song didn't sound repetitive, so they know how to do it the right way. Also, that ending was so dope, so dope. Um, if you're ever looking for ending ideas, taking away all the instruments and just having like, um, a part with lots of harmonies and voices at the end is just uh, something that can be a lot of fun. So I thought that was great for the song, especially because we get to hear Stevie Nicks on the outro. Uh, so anyway, yay. But let's move right along. Up next, we have Seasons. I'm like digging that bass. I really like that song. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um, anyway, it had like a very hip hop feel. Uh, it was very wordy, lots and lots of lyrics, which is kind of, um, well, I don't wanna say it's different from the rest of the album, but it definitely actually, it is different from the rest of the album. I don't think uh, there's been a song um, that was like this lyric and word heavy. So I really love that in the verse, um, the way that they had the melody is they had this like, static part so it's like da 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 with the jump da 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 I'm gonna play real quick so you know what I'm talking about um I just think that that melody is really cool anytime you have something like static and then you have that jump in there um it creates a point of interest for the listener and when I write my own lyrics I always think about that like can I throw in a jump if it's appropriate um because they are kind of fun to listen to the last thing I want to say about this is I love the contrast between the entire song and the bridge so as we already went over like the song is so wordy there's lots and lots of lyrics and then the bridge no lyrics it's just ooze <laughs> So um, you create that contrast just from going from a ton of words to literally no words at all. So I thought that that was a really great idea uh, for the bridge. Anyway, that is all I have for that one. Up next, we have One Light featuring Bantu. It used to be like life was a endless midnight. Easy to broken hearted. Like 
I really, really enjoyed that song. I'm going to be honest with you. It's definitely one of the top ones for me on this album. Um, just a side note, just because I have tried, I'm telling you, I've tried to write songs that have like an uplifting message and they always come out sounding so cheesy and they're like so bad. But um, somehow Maroon 5 uh, figured out how to do that um, and have an uplifting positive message without it sounding corny or cheesy. And so, yay! So I thought that this song had a, a very good, actually, intro and outro. Um, they were both awesome. If you're looking, like, if you're stuck on an intro uh, or an outro idea, for your own music, like listen to this album and just get some ideas from it because uh, the way that they start and end songs is really good. Um, I feel like it just shows Rune's five expertise um, at making music. Like they know how to start and end songs. They've done hundreds of them at this point. But anyways, I bet that that's all I have to say about the song because I did really like it a lot, but I almost like I was enjoying it too much that I wasn't really like taking notes on anything else. <laughs> It's a good problem to have, I guess. Ooh, up next we have Convince Me Otherwise with her. Like, her blows me away. Uh, I just am always impressed with them. That was not good. That was terrifying. Ooh, I love that snap. <laughs> She just sing to me forever. Another post chorus. Yep, that's my favorite song on the album so far, hands down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I love that song so much. That was so good. That was so good. Okay. First of all, again, killing it with the uh, intros and outros. For the intro, we had, um, it was like very jammy. And then that snap caught you off guard. Oh, yes. Love it. I am here for it. And then the end, the outro, um, it just got really muted on our way out. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Mwah. Do that. Also, hers voice, can she just like sing to me all day, every day, just nonstop forever and ever and ever and ever. I also love how Adam Levine had that super high note in the first verse on top of hers uh, verse. Uh, I thought that was really cool. And again, just highlights that he is a phenomenal singer as well. Um, again, we have the post chorus in this song. Uh, I have to remember to do this in my own music. Why do I always forget? But you know, where you have just like a few words if any, and it's really all about the instrumentals. You kind of have that instrumental drop. So they did that again in the song. Very catchy, absolutely love it. And the last thing I wanna mention, I almost wanna like play it again, those harmonies on Fault, I I'm gonna play it again because they just like make knock me off my chair. Here you go. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm here for it. I'm here for it, okay. Anyway, that's enough about this song. Uh, up next, we have Nobody's Love. Have I heard this before? Oh yeah, th I have heard this already. This was released in 2020? Oh yeah, it was released July 2020, according to Wikipedia. Love the melody there. Love those drums. I don't know what they're called, but I hear them in pop music a lot, and they're dope. Okay, dope. So yeah, I, I didn't realize that song came out last year, so um, it's not new, and I've definitely heard it before. Sorry, not a first reaction. Um, 
But the only thing I wanted to mention is that I thought that the melody writing was really cool in this. And for me, like when I'm stumped with melody ideas, um, some things that you can think of is just doing an ascending or descending scale. And so uh, Adam Levine wrote that in and it was like, Da, 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 da. And another thing to note too is when you're doing um, any ascending or descending scales in pop music in particular, uh, the pentatonic scale is definitely the most widely used and most popular. And so if you're not familiar with the pentatonic scale, it's do, re, mi, so, la, do, la, so, mi, re, do. So it's uh, the scale degrees one, two, three, five, six. One, six, five, three, two, one. And by the way, side note, if you're a vocalist, this has helped me so much with like doing vocal runs. And when you're practicing vocal runs, practice them on the pentatonic scale, not the regular major scale, because that is what you're gonna hear all the time in pop music. So if you're practicing your vocal runs, do it on the pentatonic scale. You'll thank me later, I promise. But anyway, that's really all I have for that one. Up next, we have Can't Leave You Alone, featuring Juice World, Rip. By the way, side note, that is like the saddest story of all time. <sighs> I like don't know why, but for some reason I just like really feel for Juice World. And um, the album that came out after he died, uh, what was that one song that I like literally listened to a million times and cried to? Hold on, I gotta find the name. Oh, it was Wishing Well. The song was Wishing Well, and I like listened to it a million times and just like cried. And you know, like the worst, Hard about all this is he worked so hard. He worked so hard and all of his fame came after he died. Oh, I can't, I can't. It's just such a sad story. But anyway, I'm glad that he's at least able to uh, live on through this music that is still being made with all of the tracks that he had recorded before he died. But anyway, I digress. Here is Can't Leave You Alone featuring Juice World. Give me some Love the rhythm there. That sounds like such an Ariana Grande thing. I'm here for it though. I feel like she does melodies like that all the time. We got the ascending melody there. I love the octave layer there too. Love how the beat drops there. Yes! All right, yes, I like that a lot, mostly because it just had Juice World in it and I'm a fan. Um, but anyway, uh, just a few quick things. I love the triplet rhythm in the melody. I thought that that was really cool. Um, a great way to keep it interesting. Also, I shouted it out during the video, but I love the octave layer. Um, that actually has been done a few times in this album and I hear it all the time in pop music. And I actually have tried that for my own music and it really does make the song sound really cool um, and kind of add some texture and color to the vocals. So just do an octave layer, either an octave above or an octave underneath. Um, I don't know, to just kind of add some more depth to it. All right, so the last thing I wanna say is I totally love the way that they kind of like drop the instruments in the second to last chorus. So it was like a lighter, so it like pulled you back. And then you knew that it was gonna come back into a bigger chorus because of course, but they had like this really cool acapella harmony lead in that just like blew my mind. It was so sick. So um, I thought that was a really great way to kind of transition into the final drop. Um, but anyway, before we talk about the next song, which is Memories, I do wanna say if you made it this far in the video, first of all, I freaking love you. Mwah. You are literally the best. And I'm so grateful that you were able to hang out with me today. I hope you had fun uh, listening to some Maroon 5 and chit chatting about it. Of course, if you did like this video, do me a huge favor and like and subscribe. It really helps me grow my channel and I am so grateful to you for doing that. Mwah! Love you, love you. And please be my friend on Instagram. Come over, say what's up, tell me my DMs that you came from YouTube. Would love to connect and be your friend. Um, I'm at Daniel Lady Be Good. And with that, the last song is Memories. Guys, we have heard Memories a million times. Actually, on Spotify, it has 1.1 billion streams. 
billion with a B, okay? So we don't need to listen to that again. But I will say, I think the concept of writing a song definitely geared towards graduations was a genius idea. And side note, you know, I it's just to me like, it's a great song, but it's like not that deep or meaningful, which is totally fine. But it's really funny because my mom like texted me uh, a few months ago and she's like, have you heard of this song called Memories? It's so beautiful. Can you please cover it? And I'm like, of course, my mom would be like, this song is so beautiful. <laughs> um, but anyway, maybe I'll do it for the moms of the world because you know what? Moms love music too, okay? Um, but anyway, that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. You are literally the best. Remember, trust yourself, be yourself, love yourself. You got this. Mwah! I love you and I'll see you next time.